The upcoming Thor Love and Thunder is exciting for plenty of reasons. Female Thor, gore, Thor's exercise routine, yes! and the introduction of the Olympians. Yes, the ever popular pantheon of gods from Greek mythology exists within the Marvel Universe, and while so far the MCU films have stuck to our favorite characters from Norse mythology, all of that is about to change. So, to prepare you for their appearance in the new movie, this video is going to be all about the characters of Marvel's Olympus. Specifically, we're going to be taking a look at how powerful they are and how they stack up against each other, the Asgardians, and any potential threats that may be looming. So let's get started. First up is Artemis, the goddess of the hunt, who has been skilled with a bow since birth. She even managed to fight off Python, the Earth Serpent, when Hera sent it to kill Artemis and her brother Apollo. You see, Artemis is the daughter of Zeus, the king of Olympus, and the stepdaughter of Hera. I say stepdaughter because Artemis' mother is the Titaness Leto, who is most definitely not Hera, Zeus' wife. Zeus's infidelity made Hera jealous, which is why she sicked the giant serpent monster on them. Olympians, like Asgardians, possess a large number of superhuman abilities, such as increased strength, speed, stamina, and durability. They're also all immortal beings and can heal themselves from any damage that they sustain. These are all traits shared by Artemis. She's also capable of transformation, and while she can change herself into other human forms, she prefers to change herself into animals. Here she is as a deer, frolicking around, gracefully trying to spoil the wasp's vacation. The daughter of Ares, god of war, and Otrera, queen of the Amazons, sounds like a winning combination of bloodlines. Well, that's exactly what it is if Hippolyta is anything to go by. She possesses all of the traits of Olympians and Amazons, on top of the combat prowess which she inherited from her father. She would eventually go on to rule the Amazons after her mother passed, and fell in love with Hercules, who never felt the same way about her. This eventually led to her demise, though, as her daughter grew tired of her mother's antics, striking Hippolyta down. Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, is more than just a complete knockout. She also possesses superhuman abilities, like her fellow Olympians. However, her main weapon actually is her sex appeal. She has the ability to manipulate love and emotion to the point where she can both start and stop wars. She's also responsible for giving birth to a number of other heroes. This ability to manipulate others is an incredible asset. There was a period where she was replaced by an impersonator, the Siren Venus, and the two eventually fought to the death. It was brutal. Moved by Venus's technique, Aphrodite eventually relinquished her position, crowning Venus as the new goddess of love. The earliest forms of life on Earth were created by the gods Gaia and Uranus. The first species they created were the Titans, who eventually opposed the rule of Zeus and the Olympian gods. Typhon was the last of the Titans to join the fight against Zeus. There's not much to say about him, really. He can shapeshift, breathe fire, and command storms. He also managed to take down both Zeus and Hera with the help of Athena's breastplate armor. Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom and warfare, who is not to be confused with Athena, a member of the Eternals, is next. Athena is the daughter of Zeus and the Titaness Matisse, and was born fully grown and armored, ready for battle. Weird, huh? Yeah, well, apparently the fates foretold that Zeus's child would surpass him, so he consumed Matisse in an attempt to prevent that, which was clearly the most logical course of action here. Athena is a truly skilled warrior who possesses superhuman abilities worthy of an Olympian god. When the Titans were born on Earth, their mother, Gaia, gave birth to two more species, the Cyclops and the Hecaton Kyris. Uranus, however, was disgusted with these creations as he viewed the Titans to already be perfect and cast the others into Tartarus. Upon sensing his mother's grief at the treatment of their children, the youngest Titan, Cronus, took up arms against his father and overthrew him, becoming the new ruler of Olympus. However, Cronus didn't want to lose his place as the ruler, so when a prophecy stated that one of his children would rise up against him, he followed in his father's footsteps and consumed each of his sons, banishing them to Tartarus. Rhea, Cronus' wife, hid the birth of Zeus from her husband, 
who, like Cronus before him, led a rebellion against the king, but we'll get to that later. In terms of powers, Cronus is the typical Olympian super strength and not really much else, but that's probably just because we haven't really seen much of him. I'm sure he has tons of other impressive abilities. I also really doubt that he'll be showing up in Thor Love and Thunder, but his story could make an interesting prequel later on should Marvel decide to expand upon the Olympian myths. Ares, the god of war, is the son of Zeus and Hera and one of the more morally questionable members of the Greek pantheon. When Zeus decided that it was okay for worship of the Olympian gods on earth to diminish, Ares grew dissatisfied with Zeus and the two clashed. He also directly disobeyed Zeus by joining in on the Trojan War, which is something his father had forbidden. Like all Olympians, Ares possesses enhanced superhuman abilities, and as the god of war, he has a number of abilities related to warfare. For starters, he's an expert in fighting and combat tactics. He can control conflict, manipulating the flow of combat and changing the outcome of battle, as well as sparking conflict wherever he pleases. This chaotic god has appeared in the DC Universe's Wonder Woman, but is yet to make his debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The legendary Hercules, or Heracles, of Greek mythology is immensely popular and has been a constant in games and movies for as long as the mediums have existed. This character also exists in the Marvel Universe, and while it hasn't been confirmed yet, I think it's a pretty safe assumption that he'll be showing up in Thor Love and Thunder. I mean, people would probably be really disappointed if he doesn't. In the Marvel incarnation, Hercules is the son of Zeus and Alcmena of Thebes, a human. As such, Hercules was born as a mortal demigod and became a true immortal god after his death and resurrection. Since becoming a god, Hercules would often get bored and seek out conflict just for his own entertainment. This often led to him getting into trouble with Thor, and usually over silly things, but the two would eventually become friends. In fact, Hercules even possessed the power of Thor himself at one point. He's been a member of teams such as the Defenders, the Heroes for Hire, and the Avengers, and fought alongside Captain America in the Civil War event. As a warrior, his Olympian superhuman abilities are matched by few, and he's performed numerous incredible feats, such as sealing off a cliff with his bare hands, running at speeds of over 100 miles per hour, and there is even a time when he pulled the entire island of Manhattan and while Marvel later retconned this by claiming it was just a story he would tell to show off, I'd like to still believe that it really happened. Cause it's cool. All in all, the man certainly lives up to the legend. Olympus may be a magnificent place, but not all of it is as grand as it may seem. Take the underworld, for example, the land of the dead. It's a far cry from the classiness of the rest of Olympus and this applies to its ruler, Hades, as well. He might be an Olympian, but he's a bit rough around the edges, especially compared to the rest. Hades, also known as Pluto, is the Greek god of the dead and the ruler of the underworld, which is also called Hades. But unlike the Asgardian ruler of the underworld, Hela, who's unsatisfied with her lot in life, Hades loves it. The spooky land of the dead is a perfect fit for the brooding Hades, and he resides there permanently, rarely venturing out save for special occasions, like the time he kidnapped his niece, Kore, and forced her into becoming his wife, where she was known as Persephone. Hades and Zeus eventually came to an agreement to let Kore return to Olympus, but she accidentally ate the fruit of the dead, a pomegranate, preventing her from leaving. Being the stand-up guy that he is, though, Hades found a way to let her spend half the year in the underworld and the other half outside of it. In terms of power, Hades is among the best of the Olympian gods, matched by few. He has tons of magical abilities, and is one of the top ranking members of the Pantheon, his Olympic abilities are far above that of a normal Olympian, something that he has in common with his brothers. As the god of the dead, Hades has a pact with death itself, allowing him to claim the souls of the worshippers of Olympian gods and bring them in as his underworld servants. He also has control over life and death, even that of the Olympian gods, and he controls their spirits in the afterlife. It's time to get wet and wild because the next on this list is the ruler of the seven seas. No, no, not, not him. I'm talking about Poseidon, the much cooler aquatic hero. Poseidon, also known as Neptune to the Romans, is the king of Atlantis and the god of the seas. 
He is the son of the Titan Cronus, making him the brother of the previously mentioned Hades, as well as a few others who didn't make this list, and one more who will, Zeus, but we'll come back to him later. As an immortal Olympian, Poseidon shares the same superhuman qualities as the rest of the gods. You know, superhuman strength, superhuman speed, reflexes, the works. He also has complete control over water, manipulating and twisting oceans to his will to aid in combat, or when just about anything else. Personally, I think oceans are pretty terrifying, full of darkness and lots of scary creatures, so this isn't a power I'd love to face. Then again, I'm just a human, so any of the powers on this list are a no-go for me. But I digress. Poseidon also can manipulate the weather and energy around him, abilities which are rivaled by very few, including Hades and his other brother Zeus. I think my favorite of Poseidon's abilities, however, is his ability to speak with all marine life. I mean, who wouldn't love to be able to talk to fish? It sure beats tapping on the glass of a fish tank. Now, based on what we know of Thor, Love and Thunder so far, I'm not really sure where he would fit in, so I don't expect to see him, but hey, you never know. I think it comes as no surprise to see that a list of the most powerful Olympians would have Zeus towards the top. Zeus is the supreme monarch of Olympus, watching over all of the inhabitants and other members of the Pantheon. He's also the god of the heavens, the sky, and the weather. Zeus was born in secret after his father, the titan Cronus, imprisoned his siblings. Since Cronus didn't know he was born, Zeus was able to travel to Tartarus and free his siblings. After a war broke out between the gods and the titans, Zeus was made king of Olympus and his brothers Hades and Poseidon were made rulers of the underworld and the sea, respectively. Zeus, like the other Olympians on this list, has superhuman qualities that you should be mighty familiar with at this point, so I won't list them again. He also channels lightning in battle with a far greater control over the element than Thor has. Though the Marvel handbooks put Zeus on par with Odin, I think I'd give Odin the edge a little bit. But that might just be because we've seen so much more of Odin and his abilities are far more well documented. Still, Zeus is a mighty god and king who very few can stand up against. He's taken down Galactus, absolutely wrecked the Hulk, picked up and thrown mountains, and stopped Mjolnir. These feats all provide proof that Zeus absolutely earns his high spot on this list. Now, Zeus has been confirmed to show up in Thor Love and Thunder, as we can see here in this trailer, but at this point he's the only one confirmed so far, so we can really only speculate on who else we'll see. By the way, I tried really hard not to make a pun where I called something shocking, so Please give me some credit for that. It might be hard to imagine any Olympian as being stronger than Zeus. I mean, he is a sky father, but there are a few out there. One such example is Nyx. Nyx is the goddess of shadows and represents the darkness within Olympus. She's constantly been at odds with the Olympians and is one of the few people who Zeus fears, and for good reason. See, Nyx was locked away by Zeus, and when she escaped, she slaughtered the Olympic Pantheon and even managed to snap Zeus's neck. Her powers are simply incredible, outclassing almost the entirety of Olympus. Her control over darkness allows Nyx to summon constructs to fight for her, control the minds of her enemies, and to teleport across space and time. During a battle with the Avengers, she managed to blind Scarlet Witch, one of the most powerful magic users in the universe, and pierced Hulk's skin. And this was her in a weakened state after losing a significant portion of her powers. Finally, the last and most powerful Olympian on this list, even more powerful than Zeus, is Gaia, who's, well, I guess you could say she's basically like Mother Earth. Gaia is an elder god which predate the normal gods. She existed on Earth before life came to be and created the first life forms. She has since become one with the planet, weaving her essence into all life on Earth. This gives her limitless abilities and control over all natural things. Though she doesn't often participate in actual combat, making her strength hard to judge, her mystical abilities put her far above the power level of most. She created Adam to rid the world of the other Elder Gods when they became corrupt, she helped usher in the extinction of the dinosaurs so that humans can flourish, and she protected humanity from the Celestials. That's quite an impressive resume. And that's that, those are my picks for the most powerful Olympian gods. Who would make your list? And who do you expect to see in Thor Love and Thunder coming out this summer? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.